the results are in. Um, a little while ago, I took these 18650s out of my 7S 4P lithium-ion pack, which is charged by a standard lead-acid solar charge controller. I've made no adjustments to that solar charge controller at all. It's on a standard 24-volt lead-acid charging profile. And after running this pack for almost exactly a year, through the winter, through the summer, through bad conditions and good solar conditions alike, I wanted to see how their capacities had changed. So over the last couple of weeks I've run all these 28 cells through the Lytokana Engineer Lee 300, uh, mainly for two reasons. Firstly, it has an automatic charge, discharge and recharge function, and secondly, that's the uh, charger and discharger I use to determine the capacities of each of these cells in the first place. So uh, it's best to use the same discharger um, the second time round. Now in front of you in this table here we can see the uh, capacities of each cell back in 2016, November of 2016. I've also noted uh, a cell number here and which group they were in for this 7S pack. And down here we can see the average of the capacity of all of those cells and that was 2,400 and 76 milliamp hours but the big reveal what did we end up with in 2017 well as you can see the average has dropped 2390 milliamp hours so uh, that calculates to a uh, average difference of minus 86.39 milliamp hours so each of these cells individually has lost around 86 milliamp hours and that's after 360 partial cycles so i don't think that's bad uh, on average you know we're losing i don't know um a quarter of a milliamp per cycle a quarter of a milliamp per cycle. I don't think that's bad, but I've highlighted a few cells here uh, that are of particular interest, and here they are, right at the top. This one here, um, well, this one, over the two tests, the first test, uh, 2,427 milliamp hours, and then the second test, 2,426. So apparently this has lost only one milliamp hour in all that time. This cell here from group 4, well I actually ended up testing this one twice more recently because a year ago I measured it at 2,397 milliamp hours, whereas this year I tested it twice, 2,431 milliamp hours or 2,422 milliamp hours. So this cell has increased its capacity. So that's a bit of a rogue, but uh, obviously my first test a year ago wasn't entirely accurate. Now, was that because it wasn't fully charged or was that because temperatures were different when I tested this cell? I'm afraid I can't go back in history to find out. And finally, this cell in group 5, this was our biggest loser, uh, 2,522 milliamps in 2016, 2,339 in 2017, that's a loss of 183 milliamp hours, so uh, like I said, that's our biggest loser. So 86.39 milliamp hours on average gives us an average of 3.49 percent three and a half percent has been lost in the capacity of these cells over 360 partial cycles in a year through winter summer spring and autumn now, out of interest, I have been taking the internal resistances of these cells as well, and I did that back in 2016, and I've run that test again now. But I'm afraid it doesn't show any conclusive evidence. Um, the internal resistance in some cells has increased, but in other cells, it's decreased. And to be honest, those differences in the reading is probably down to the Lytokala. I don't think we've managed to find 
anything particularly interesting in the internal resistance. So 28 cells here have been tested for the last year, charged through the day using a lead acid solar charge controller, discharged at night using lights on the outside of my shed, and in total they've lost 3.5% of their capacity. Well, I think that's a bit of a win. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video, if you have, give me a thumbs up, subscribe down below, comment if you can, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.